Hey, you hello everybody, this is Purge, bringing you guys the next game of Dignity Toss versus Dark Falco Stack. We're in the winner's bracket finals of the, let's see if I can do this right again, the Plantronics GameCon Dota 2 event. I'm just going to call it that, whatever. If you guys want to check out the prize pool or any information, go to gamecom.plantronics.com slash Dota 2. If, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube video, I'm going to put the description in the box below. The comment section below that's what it is that's right i've i am i am the youtuber i promise um the first prize is uh two thousand dollars second place is one thousand third place is five hundred so both of these teams guaranteed at least five hundred dollars and prizing so make sure that you guys end up uh supporting all the teams and uh the tournament and thanks everybody for watching so we can look at the picking and banning right now things are starting up uh, Lifestealer is going to get banned by Dignity House again, as well as the Nyx Assassin. They banned the same heroes in the previous game. Dark Falco stack. This game actually banning Wisp. He looks a little gray there. I don't know about you guys, but uh, maybe it's just my my uh, flux here. It looks a little blue on my right monitor. Bat Rider banned as well. Two heroes used by Dignity Toss in the last game. Game and instead now Dignity Toss says, okay, well you're not going to ban Lone Druid. We'll take that instead. Um, always very, very good to have all of the top tier heroes in strats up your sleeve because that way you can shift things around, um, that you don't have to rely on one hero that is going to be easily target bannable. And uh, we'll see if Dignitas can do the same with Lone Druid now. I'm expecting they definitely can. Um, uh, AUI 2000's Lone Druid is very, very famous actually in the sense that uh, he was one of the first to pioneer the uh, Maelstrom build, which is the the lightning shooting hammer. Um, it's actually put on your bear, and it's used as a substitute for radiance. Actually, um, if you're doing really well, it's advocated to get a fast uh, Maelstrom instead. It can't be used to push creep waves when your primary hero isn't around, but the extra attack speed as well as the AOE that it does provide is still actually pretty reasonably awesome for an item. So uh, that build was stolen by the Chinese, I believe, uh, but it was originally an AUI 2000 build. At least that is what I hear. Maybe this is all rumors, but favorite from pro players is probably true, right? Um, Lone Druid picked first. Magnus Shadow Demon is the response from Dark Falco. Magnus was the other hero that was banned in the in the uh, first round in the previous match. And Dark Seer this time from Dignitas. We'll see a long lane Dark Seer most likely. Sometimes we haven't seen actually a mid Dark Seer, um, at least in European Dota and occasionally Chinese as well. I've been actually watching a lot more replays lately of high level Dota, and uh, Dark Seer mid is is becoming somewhat common. Now, you don't really expect him to get kills necessarily, but if he's mid rather than a long lane, he gets those levels up so much faster. You pick up a bottle, sometimes an arcane boots, and um, you should have the vacuum wall combo quite rapidly. So, great mid roll, especially if you have a melee hard carry, just fantastic because you can support him so much earlier with level 4 ion shells and vacuums. So, um, it's a pretty good build, but usually it's mostly used to counter any melee solos. Uh, very popular in the Chinese scene to do uh, strengthy melee solos like Panda or Beastmaster, but regardless, we'll see what ends up mid. Uh, as we saw last game, it was a Puck Queen of Pain, and uh, I don't know if we'll see it again. Rubik actually drafted by Dignitas. Not too surprising, though. Um, arguably one of the best supports still in the game. And most importantly, Dark Falco stack has one of the best abilities in the game, which is going to be Reverse Polarity. Um, if you guys don't watch too much of Dota 2, this is essentially Dark Seer's Vacuum, and an AoE stun, which sounds pretty overpowered, and you could argue, yes, this ability is one of the best in the game. Goes through Magic Immunity, did I mention? Does it sound good? It's good. Uh, only does 150 damage, that's probably the only thing I could say sucks about it, and uh, 120 second cooldown is moderate. Uh, quite a bit for an ultimate, but very, very good ability. Uh, vacuum plus stun just lets you set up for so much damage potential. In Dark Fact, Foco actually going for an AoE carry, which is going to be Gyrocopter. Um, he has Flat Cannon, which hits all enemy units within 1000 radius includes creeps for his regular attack damage and uh, cooldown also just some very good aoe so magnus in combination with gyrocopter sounds really scary actually if gyro has some decent farm and they're at comparable levels to dignitas so that might be a little scary for dignitas the real question is who are they going to put mid down lane magnus dark is a possibility like i said gets a melee hero like mag um iron show will be a nuisance at the very least so we could see that, but more likely it will be a long lane Darkseer. Um, and also, Magnus is going to have to be very, very careful about the Rubik. If he gets RP stolen in the middle of a team fight, it's going to swing things around just the opposite way, assuming Rubik can position well with a Blink Dagger or a Force Staff, or simply just walking in. So, Magnus, got to be careful, uh, especially because Rubik's in the game. Second round bans, we do see an Undyne start things off, another really, really strong hero. I didn't talk about that very much last game, though he did get banned, but um, still seen as uh, one of the most powerful trialing heroes in the game, and that's just because Tombstone is a beast. If you're fighting it, 
you, you get into a lot of trouble. So you either have to focus it down or you have to simply just walk away from every tombstone fight. And then what teams usually do is just force you to fight. They stun you. Then they throw the tombstone down. You try to save your allies. And it just gets messy and there's zombies everywhere. Not a fun situation to be in. So pretty easy ban from Dignitas there. And I'd also like to point out that Gyrocopter is a great tri lane carry. Uh, Rocket Barrage at one skill point does... Uh, was that 11 damage per rocket he shoots 10 rockets per second in the last three seconds so we're talking 330 magic damage for a one point skill that's insanely powerful um we're obviously assuming there's no creeps around which isn't always the case or uh, but this damage can be distributed across all of your targets within 10 seconds within the small range so if you do hit that on one person at a seven second cooldown that skill is extremely powerful and if you can catch somebody with the skill it is very very uh, very, very usable in an early tri lane. Throw and dying on top of that and another stunner, and you are talking about a scary tri lane. So, pretty understandable that Dignitas is banning strong tri lane heroes. And there's another one. Gonna see a Leshrac ban up next. Um, Shen ban next, some Dark Falco stack. Dignitas did use that in the previous game to send back some allies, push, and just generally farm, actually. I feel like the Chen actually didn't do that much in the last game other than push, but he's definitely very good for, good at that. Uh, similar to a hero like Enchantress or Enigma. You can use him for ganking, you can use him for farming into pushing, and uh, in the previous game, Dignitas did go for farming. So, Dignitas will next ban an Enigma because they're worried about more team fight ultis. Though, I would dare say Enigma versus a Rubik is a scary matchup because Rubik has the easiest time in the world stealing Black Hole. He goes through Magic Immunity, he channels it for four seconds, there's a giant window if Rubik doesn't get Black Hole that he can take that spell. And oftentimes, even if Enigma Black Holes, if somebody stuns him out of it, the first thing Rubik does as soon as that black hole ends is steal black hole and usually will be able to swing it on your opponents. So um, I am guessing Dignitas is just a little concerned about uh, possible jungle advantage, especially since their early game is pretty passive and um, maybe team fight ulties or uh, getting early push done. Lone Druid Darks are not the best early game heroes if uh, there's a lot of team fighting going on. So I can understand why they would want to ban a hero like Enigma. It could make things a little iffy, especially with the Magnus on top of that. I mean, if you get behind it all, that could be the end of the game because it's so impossible or so difficult to fight against that. So last ban is going to be a Tinker, actually, a hero that we don't see that often in the pro games currently. Uh, Dignitas will not be able to use that as their mid. They are still waiting for a mid hero. Darkseer will be their long lane. Rubik support, Lone Druid, most likely safe lane farming could be a long lane, but Lone Druid as a whole is being played in the safe lane farm by almost every major team that I've seen. Now, you can still do long lane solo, but I, I find personally that it's very difficult because if you ever make a mistake and get behind, then your hero ends up being uh, very underleveled and underfarmed, and he's not the most survivable long lane. Sure, you can pull the creeps around with your bear, but it's a little dicey and things can go bad pretty fast. Not to mention they have a Darkseer anyways. Why would you put a long Lone Druid in the long lane? So... Uh, waiting on a pick. It's going to be a Jug, actually. This is looking like a push strat out of Dignitas here. Darkseer with Iron Shell and Jug is a lot of early game potential. Uh, most likely, Darkseer will just solo to get the EXP up, and then they'll do some pushing later. But um, this actually makes their lanes a little weird. Now, uh, what they'll probably end up doing is either a dual lane mid with Jug Rubik, um, or more likely what they'll just do is put Lone Druid on the mid lane. He's arguably one of the best mid heroes in the game. He's very, very... Um, that's, that's a little... Uh, that's kind of a... Oh, let me explain that statement. Arguably mid. best mid hero in the game. Um, that's not true. He's arguably the best solo Five versus solo mid. hero in the game. Any hero has a lot of trouble beating Lone Druid in the mid lane. Um, or in a solo lane. If Lone Druid is on a safe lane farm versus a long lane solo, he almost always has a good chance. No matter who it is. There's very, very few heroes that can actually outlane Lone Druid. Um... And it's it's very it's honestly is a very small number. Um, it's because you have two damage sources with your bear and your right click. You can use those to focus on one guy. You can last hit the same creep using both damage sources if you time it correctly. It's very very potent. And of course you can just send the bear. You can right click the bear on the enemy hero and he has to run away from the creep wave in most situations. So um, Lone Druid very very good one v one hero. He obviously doesn't need runes, but you can still rune control. You can send the bear over to a rune. If the rune ends up being there, you just kill it with the bear, or you take it. And uh, that will deny some creep EXP. It's, despite not having AoE, he can still do that. So Lone Druid, very, very capable in a mid role. He doesn't necessarily... He can't snowball with the runes or the rune control as much as other heroes, but he does get to do a good job farming. He can contest farm from the opponents, unlike most mid heroes, or at least some mid heroes. And uh, all around, great solo hero to have, so... 
Excited to see Dignitas possibly put him there. It might be in mid-solo. He might be safe lane solo. He could be with a Rubik duel as well. Maybe they'll put Jug mid. Who knows? I'd be really surprised about that, especially versus Meg. Most likely will be Lone Druid. Uh, Wind Runner, the next pick out of Dark Falco. They're taking a lot of time to pick here. As you guys can see, the reserve time is down to low numbers for both teams. Windrunner surely will be their long lane. Uh, Windrunner versus the Lone Druid is an okay matchup. Um, Lone Druid usually has the advantage there, though, unless Windrunner is insanely good at last hitting. Uh, that really comes down to the player being very good. So uh, hopefully for Dark Falco, their long lane player. I, I don't know if it's going to be Hannah playing the Windrunner this game, but um, I haven't seen him play the hero very much, but I'm assuming he'll do a decent job. He's definitely a solid player. Uh, last pick from Team Dignity House now. They are looking for a possible jungle or another support hero. They currently have a great trial line, Rubik, Juggernaut. They just need something else. And an Ogre, actually. Cool. I, I love Ogre Magi as a hero. Great base, uh, great strength gain, actually. So despite being a support hero, actually has good HP. And uh, one of the very, very few int heroes to actually be melee. Um, but his skills are fantastic. He has a very low cooldown stun with Fire Blast. 12 seconds. This does get decreased as you get more levels of multicast. Uh, I believe. Uh, I think I'm correct on that. Yeah, yeah. Two, four, six for cooldown reduction. So, at level 16, he's going to be casting that every six seconds. A lot of mana cost for it, but regardless, fire blast, great spell. You also have a second disable at level two, which is uh, very uncommon for most support heroes. Rubik has one disable and one nuke. A hero like Crystal Maiden is one of the other few that actually does have two disables. So, Crystal Maiden has an AOE slow, and she has an entangle or frostbite, as as you might call it. Uh, but Ogre Magi has a slow. Pretty potent slow at level 1, by the way. 20% for 4 seconds. Only does about 100 damage. But the two together makes for a very, very good ganking, roaming, nuke support hero. And it only gets better by the time you hit level 8. And you actually scale quite well as a support late game because you'll be picking up Bloodlust, which actually helps you buff up the attack speed of your allied carries. And most importantly, man, the bear. The lone druid bear. You can cast this on the bear. Attack speed is exactly what that bear wants. 50 attack speed, 16 movement speed is insanely powerful. So look to see Ogre Magi in the mid late game using Bloodlust on the bear. It is exactly what he wants to go for. And, and also, in uh, AOI's benefit here, he's not going to have to get phase boots or any movement speed increasing item on the lone druid. He can just keep regular brown boots and uh, Bloodlust is going to absolutely help him out in the late game. So Better get ready. Awesome drafting by Dignitas. And uh, Looks like uh, Dark Falco stack's gonna finish up with Naga Siren. This probably it's looking at, yeah Naga support is look like looks like what it's gonna be. The reason she's played as a support now is because her base damage is much lower. Um, she still has very good skill set for roaming, big disables, uh, decent damage, and her utility ulti can also be very usable. There's actually a lot of teams that are running her as a support hero at the moment. So, ooh, looks like they're be doing a mid pull here. One power shot from Hannah Montana. Dark Falco may be able to skewer this. He does. He has leveled skewer here. Uh, we'll see if he does take it, but this could be enough here, uh, and it does look like FNC is going to be pulling mid. Um, it's a little harder to do this, I think, in the past than it was, but uh, we'll see if that's what he goes for here. So let's go over the players quick. For the rating team, Hannah Montana is playing Windrunner. I have never seen this hair before. Thirty seconds to go. The Protector's hair. Um, regardless, he is going to be playing mid, uh, going for the long lane here, 250 gold. He's expecting to be up uh, against the Lone Druid. So this is why he's saving some money. Probably going to go for a bottle here for extra mana and HP regen. Smart choice. Uh, we also have Dark Falco playing the Magnus. Dismech is on the Shadow Demon again. Mojo Storm Stout is on the Naga Siren. And FNC playing Jarcopter this game. Um, I think they're pulling mid. I assume that's why they did it up. So I'm sorry. There's a fight going on here. Universe using his spin. Now running away. Might be in a little trouble. Oh, there's no disables really. They would have had to net that to keep him in place. But they're just going to walk away. This is an aggressive tri lane by the way. And one clarity potion for Universe is going to put him back up to full mana. So... Tides of Time on the Ogre Magi. Did I cover the rest of the team? FNC, I did. Okay. For Dignity Toss here, we have Tides on Ogre Magi. Juggernaut being played by Universe. Actually, normally the long lane hero. Uh, way too sexy is on the Rubik. Mid lane is going to be Fogged. Playing Darkseer, he's going mid. And uh, we have AOA 2000 on the Lundred. So it's an aggressive tri lane. They're going to try to shut down the Gyrocopter despite them having a safe tri lane. And it's actually pretty dangerous to do as a dire team because you actually don't have any creeps to pull. Ooh, Tides might be in trouble. There's the disruption. Well, will we have the net? We will have the net. Here comes the net onto Tides. Trying to run away here. There is going to be one nuke on FNC. Telkinese as well. He wants to get him out of Rocket Barrage range. He's barely going to catch him. There's the spin from Universe trying to help out. And that is going to be first blood. FNC in some trouble though. Eating some tangos. Couple more right clicks. But I think they have to give up on this. And they will actually. Couple more right clicks on Nogus Iron. There's the net on way too sexy. He's got Telkinesis in two. But a really good start for Dark Falco. Start stack here. That's going to be a 2-0. Starting things off, like I said, guys, Rocket Barrage, serious damage output. A little greedy from Tides to go try to ward there, and he didn't actually get it up successfully. 
but he gets killed, and that starts things off very rough for them. Jug is still going to have a spin here, but what's the level advantage? FNC now heading to Shadow Demon as well, and here comes the nuke. Way too sexy is in trouble with disruption. There's the Soul Catcher. Will they get the nut off? Another Rocket Barrage. Oh, he actually dodges a lot of the damage there. Big mistake from the Dire Team. Net finally getting put down a way too sexy Telekinesis as well, and he's going to do an AoE stun on these guys. So they're going to be absolutely okay here. There's the spin. FNC might be in trouble. Putting him low, 150 HP, still doing slight damage, but he's going to run him, actually. Slim movement speed on Gyrocopter. Nuke's going to hit, actually. He might be in trouble here. Can he get hit by the Ogre? It's not going to be enough, actually. Another disruption. 100, one hit on Dismech. Universe getting Ned. This actually could be his death. Does he have a Stout Shield? Will it be enough? Taking one hit. Stout Shield's up. One more hit to go, and he's going to go down 5 HP. Actually, the Flat Cannon comes through, but the great self pop from Universe is going to keep him alive just barely there. Sick plays from FNC to actually level Flat Cannon to try to get the kill. Maybe he could have gotten him if he leveled it earlier. Who knows? But he did put the Flat Cannon down to try to score the kill, and it was not enough damage on Universe. But regardless, Salve being popped from his ally, now not a whole lot of regen left on the bot lane. So not the not a good start for uh, Dignitas here. Once again, they won't be able to ward this camp, I don't believe. Um, he's going to put one on the high ground here. So give him some pretty good ward vision. And Fogged will bottle up this illusion, which will give him some good... Far mid, if we compare CS, 15 last hit on, on Darkseer and only 9 on Dark Falco. So a good lane advantage going to Darkseer, but regardless, Magnus is still getting some good last hits and EXP. On the top lane, Hannah Montana finishes his bottle, of course. AUI running back, popping some tangos here. Uh, Hannah Montana actually doing a great job. 13 last hits. I wish I would have been able to watch the start of this lane, see how he's been doing it. But the bear is actually being sent back because it does want some heal. It's got an H or it's got a boots, low HP, and an orb of venom to start things off for AOI here. But in just a second, he'll resummon this once it gets towards the max HP. And he will continue the wrath on Hannah, who is now trading hits on AOI. Now he does have a range advantage, just slightly able to be at 50 range advantage. Bear is back. And now he will trade hits once again. Back on the safe lane. Looks like FNC is getting some good last hits. Uh, just hit, pick it up six here. Universe is at level four and now getting some solo EXP. Going for stats spin build. Pretty common. Little iron shell by the Darkseer Illusion. That was really cool. Very, very cool way to get extra farm by Fogged. Very smart, actually. Never seen somebody do that before, but um, awesome to do. I might as well send it over there for some extra gold. And also, it's going to prevent the uh, enemy long lane from getting the XP. Just leaving the ghost here by itself is going to mean that when he does eventually go to farm that, he's not going to get as much EXP as expected. But wow, look at the roam, actually. They're going to try to get Hannah Montana. The bear is chasing, but will they have this on the... Yep, he's in a lot of trouble. Here's the first stun. He's going to save the second stun. No, he's not actually going to. He's going to throw him back. And here comes Windrun. No, he doesn't. He does have the mana just barely now running through the river. And he's going to have a pretty good chance. Good nuke from way too sexy. Puts him down to 21 HP. Will we see fog shift over is the question. Courier's going to be flying over. There's the bottle, and Hannah Montana's actually going to survive here. Great decision-making here. Maybe they should have saved the Telekinesis until he chose to Windrun. I'm not quite sure. Maybe they thought they could burst him down in time, but they were very, very close there. Maybe did Way Too Sexy use his Fade Bolt? That's the question. Or did he save it until the salve? I'm not quite sure, but maybe he could have Fade Bolted in the jungle. I'm not quite sure. Tide's looking for ganks, or at least heroes in the lane. It's going to be Hannah Montana finally showing back up. Another power shot to get 2 CS, and he's doing pretty good, considering 17 last hits. How's Universe doing? Level 3 only, so this actually did mess up Dignitas' uh, lane setup by quite a bit by dying those two times. EXP advantage in the Radiant team. Gold advantage as well, actually, so going pretty well for the Dark Falco stack. Much better than the last game, that's for sure. And Fog picks up a quick energy booster for the extra mana regen. Three levels in Iron Shell now. And he can push it very, very impressively, as you can see. I mean, look at this damage. Wow, that was just literally a second of two iron shells. He got put quite low. Actually puts his ulti down. Gonna be looking for some nukes. Skewers under the tower. Here comes a little bit of Riptide and the net as well. Dark Falco goes into this. Man, that was solid play from Dark Falco. Really, really nicely done there. I love that. Skewered under tower, killed all the creeps. And pops the invis right when he was at a little threat of dying. Great roam from the Naga Siren as well as the Shadow Demon. So they kill get another kill. It's the 3-0 right now. So looking really good for Dark, Dark Falco stack. Even the gank on Hannah Montana wasn't successful. And now he picks up a Blades of Attack, so more damage can be done to the bear. He picks up a Stout Shield at least, which will help him out a bit. Nice deny from Hannah. Universe now at level 4. Just trying to get as much EXP as he can after their failure in the tri lane. FNC picks up a phase. He's got a Ring of Basilius as well. So a little bit of armor for the creeps. And nice. I love this. Flat Cannon Harass while getting last hits by FNC. You can only do it for three attacks at level one. But regardless, some damage done to the push of the creep wave and some harass on the Juggernaut at the same time. So Shadow Demon looks like he's going to start the pulling. Going the same skill build as we saw in the last game. Windrunner bottles the double damage rune. Being pursued by Fogged actually. 
And some right click actually, some really good damage to Fogged here. And the rest of the supports staying close. One smoke, a lot of wards actually. Ogre Magi with four. See what he does with this. It's going to take at least one hit. It's about 100 damage in Tango as well. He might actually be in threat of dying. Power shot's going to hit. 80 HP. He's using the Tango. Hannah Montana wants to go for it. There's the nuke. Puts him at 12. Can he get the kill? There's obviously some ward vision somewhere, and he's going for it. Hannah Montana wants it. He's got the boots advantage, and Ogre Magi, I think, will be getting killed. Their power shot's going to whiff again. Can he sacrifice the neutrals? This is going to be really close. Tide's going to do his best. He's waiting for it. But Hannah does get the kill. Took the last hit at just the right time, and uh, Tide's is doing his best to sacrifice, but it can only do so much. So. Good escape there, but uh, not going to be enough. Hannah now roaming towards the mid lane. Can he get the shackle on Fogged? There's one nuke on him. Dark Falco wants the ulti. He doesn't have the mana. Will he pop the wand? There's the disruption. It's actually looking really bad. Oh, man. He might be going. Oh, he's not going to. Does the screw back. Still cool down on the RP, and he gets a kill. Another power shot mid. 5-0 is going on now. And a really solid start. So, awesome start for uh, Dark Falco stack here. This is way different than the last game. A spin on Universe, he looks pretty dead. He's going to try to TP out. Will he be able to get there in time? One right click in the Rocket Barrage. 6 0 starting things off. What is going on in this game? Man, I saw those chat comments, guys. You said just go on to the next set, and that is not what's happening right now. This is looking a whole lot like the Dark Falco stack is going to have a comeback here. 6 0. I didn't think it was going to happen after the last game, but it is definitely happening. Impressive players uh, making some solid plays, so. On the bright side, Dignitas does still have AUI 2000 getting a lot of farm. He is actually going to go for phase boots, it looks like. Yep, phase boots on his bear is what he opts for. Tranquil on his primary hero. Um, Orb of Venom plus Stout Shield. The skill build is also very interesting. Picks up one early Rabid, also true form. So a little extra attack speed, a little extra movement speed. You will be able to use this to chase down opponents. And Bot Tower gets killed by Gyrocopter. So, man, what is going on here? EXP earned is looking solid for the Radiant team. Dire team uh, also behind on gold. So 2,000 gold advantage for the Radiant team. Just swinging up, getting the tower there. Hannah Montana completely out of mana, level 6. Almost at his phase boots as well. He's not sure, maybe shopping there. He's kind of playing it safe here. Maybe missed the last hit. AOI still doing a nice job to deny it. And uh, as he levels this up, probably will max out Synergy next. It's kind of nice to have the early levels of Rabbit, I'm sure, but generally you want the extra bonus damage on the bear as well as the movement speed. As Synergy, most importantly, does give movement speed to the bear. Very, very important in the early game. But he will just use Rabbit until the team fights or the kill start. Ooh, one here gets caught at the rune. It's going to be Dark Falco. It looks pretty dead. RP actually going to buy him a second. Will he secure high ground? He's going to do it. Great play by him. Puts him high. Almost gets a double kill. Fog now on high ground. He could have actually ran away from that. He opted instead to try to make plays. And they're going to get a double kill from this. Fog definitely doesn't have a TP scroll. And he does make the play. Very, very smart. There's a spin. Actually, Universe does some damage to Hannah. Great net. Actually going to keep Hannah alive. He's going to try to do some orb walking to guarantee this kill. He's got to be careful though. Oh, man. Is he going to feed Universe? Universe, are you going to get it? He's going high ground. Can he get him phase boots just in time? Hannah gets away. And now more right clicks as Dismek is going after him. And the Rocket Barrage. Universe is in trouble. He does go down. Playing a little too greedy there. And way too sexy under tower now. The bear is doing the right click. And AUI is playing this really safe. Just wants the bear to hit. Looking for entangles. There he gets an entangle on the creep for the last hit. Not exactly what he was aiming for. But that's going to make it less one-sided, 10 to 1. Once again, sick plays from the Magnus. Ops to sacrifice himself for a double kill. Absolutely worth it there. He tried to just skewer them and put them all here. One got before to the low ground. That was uh, the Ogre Magi Tides. But killing the Darks here. Uh, another big play. And Fogged is now at 3 deaths, 1 kill, and 3 deaths. Though he is at level 8, doing pretty good with a Buckler and an Arcane Boots. Uh, a lot of mid... Dark Series usually just completely skip the Sol Ring, and I think this is pretty smart because they can just get Arcanes as well as a uh, bottle. A bottle is very, very useful in the mid lane, as you can tell. And the Arcanes also very good for overall max uh, mana pool over time. Though this is going to hurt him late game, I think Sol Ring is a little bit more useful late because of the passive mana regen and the fact that you can use it every cast, essentially. Um, still very good build, regardless. So, they're in the jungle now. Or, I'm sorry, in the rush pit. Uh, Juggernaut with three spins. Ulti's up. One Bracer. Probably going fast drum. But two deaths on him. And a really fast first shot. I don't know if the Radiant team realizes this going on. Let's try to check some vision here. Um, if you take a look at Radiant Vision, they do not realize. He is throwing some Shadow Poison over there to try to catch this out. But, regardless, they have a bear. What do you do versus the bear? Who knows? Age has picked up. A little Surge on Darkseer. 
and way too sexy with the TP scroll. Oh, they're going to trade a tower for that one, so the rainy team does get the top tower, but considering their advantage, I think they were pretty likely to snag that one no matter what, regardless of trading that for a Roshan, so... KDA is looking fantastic for the Dark Falco stack. Four kills on Jaro. They want to fight this. They do have a reverse polarity. 1,500 gold on Magnus as well. He's going to start off the missile here. Will they dive this is the question. I think they are thinking about it. Support Hero is going to hit this a couple times. And we will see the missile get killed. One of the reasons why Gyrocopter stun is uh, usually not leveled. Pretty easy to counter it. And he's got a Claymore picked up. So this means he's going for a Shadow Blade. Um, oh, I love what Universe is doing here. He's just waiting for supports to come into the jungle. Uh, spending some time waiting for it. He knows that if any of these supports show up, he might be able to get a solo kill. Naga Siren, Shadow Demon, possible kills here. Low vision on Fog, Shackle. It's going to land on way too sexy. And ulti as well from the Naga Siren. Is that worth it though? Because they did have two stuns. Here comes the ulti. Oh, Dark Falco is going to be able to catch two in the RP. And two heroes immediately getting killed. Nuke also on Tide's power shot lands on him. And Universe is trying to do everything he can. But he's got to be really careful. Damage output is huge. Mojo is getting low. And the bear is still chasing as well. Another good nuke. Mojo looks pretty dead here. I think AOI is going to be able to grab it. He is going to go down, though. Aegis will be up. It's like, oh, great entangle. FNC, this might be his life. It's going to be really close. Oh, man, down to 38 HP. He's got to resum this great skewer to put him away. And AOI now might be in trouble. Great nuke, and he is so dead. Wow, he died fast. Three levels of synergy and a lot of burst damage before he could transform. Even way too sexy might be... Oh, great turn nuke there. Windrunner goes down. Mojo net in one second. There's the split. Telekinesis puts him away. Great nuke from Dark Falco and another spin. This could be at vacuum. At least if they can pick up one kill here, it's going to make it a lot more worth of a Dignitas. But there's no extra mana or spells to use on Universe. There's a couple right clicks on Mojo. And he's going to change his mind. He wants to go high ground, I guess. Oh, that was so smart. I love that. It baits them into it. And a great skewer lineup for Dark Falcon. Once again, they're going to put a hero top lane. Magnus does get killed by Ogre Magi. But Mojo with the DD. Surge, great disruption once again. Chase is not quite over yet. Tides does have another nuke. There it is. Dismac takes the damage. No Shackle Latch. Will they continue fighting? Do oh, great ulti on Fogged. And now the Battery Assault once again doing the damage. Another kill. And Dignitas is once again diving a little bit too hard here. Constant team fights going on. Tides also taking the Rocket Barrage damage. Level 4 does so much. Starting the missile off, he is going to back off from this, actually. Lone Druid picks up the Nagasarian. A little bit of a late chase. Double Gloves of Haste picked up, actually. I think this might be for a Hand of Midas as well as a Mjolnir. Uh, not quite sure, though. Oh, great juke from AOI two so far. Entangle in two seconds. He's going to start to fight this. Can he get the Entangle? No, great Shackle. Though. Power Shot land on AOI. Is he going to nuke it? Nope. RP in five seconds. And he's going to try to hold him off. Running back to his jungle, possibly. We'll see. It's going to get a full heal here. There is still a lot of pressure going on. 16 to 7, despite the better teamfight heroes out of uh, the Dark Falco stack. I'm a little surprised this isn't going better for them. I would have thought it would have been one-sided, considering that the early was a 10 to, 10 to 1 lead. It's not a one-sided game. Five deaths on Fog Team still does have 61 last hits, which is second from the top. So despite their deaths, they're still farming very, very well. Blink Dagger's finished on Magnus, though, so they will have to worry about RP. And wow, fast treads. I've never seen a fast treads on a Shadow Demon before, actually. Um, almost all Shadow Demons actually play very, very conservative. Aim for things like just a magic stick and a lot of wards. But he opts for the extra HP. Attack speed's not bad either. And he can switch this to int if he's largely just casting mana. So can be very useful in the mid to late game or even early on. They still do have to worry about the burst damage. And that is probably why he did opt for the strength treads. So a little damage done here. Dismax going to do one disruption. There's the blink forward. Oh, great skewer on Fog to start things off. One nuke here. Vacuum to start off as well. There's the net and a couple right clicks. He's taking a lot of damage. So there's the spend. Great initiation from Universe. And we will actually see Nago go down. Fog's going to bottle through that. 44 HP ends up staying alive. Oh, the Omni Slash is going to catch Om or Hannah Montana as well. And another purge. Oh, Dismax. 5 HP. I can't believe it. Healing Ward's going to keep Universe alive, and he does actually get entangled down. Another dead hero. Two, oh, three dead heroes? What's going on? Dignitas is winning the fights, apparently. Nagasaren goes down. I mean, everybody barely survived. Fog did not die. Five HP or so. Universe got very low as well. Puts the Healing Ward down. Keeps him alive. And they got three kills. They lost zero heroes there, if I'm uh, not mistaken. Yes. Yeah, uh, Shadow Demon died. Magnus died. Nagasaren died. And Windrunner. Four dead heroes, actually. Is that correct? Did four heroes die in the fight? I think they did. 
So huge advantage from Dignitas coming back 16 to 10. Look at the graphs. It's a swing back. EXP is back in Dignitas' advantage. And gold is also in their advantage. Very slight amount, though, so it's not the end of the world. Let's see what the Radiant team's working with in terms of items. Shadow Blades finished from Gyrocopter. You can use this for things like starting a missile, going invis, and then breaking invis rocket barrage. You can also invis, break invis with a rocket barrage. There's a lot of options. Hannah Montana almost has mech, about 700 gold to go. And there's Shackle on Tides. He's getting a double stunned. Way too sexy. He's looking for a power shot. One nuke on him, actually. And here's the power shot. Puts Dismech low. Gets the kill, actually. Soul Catcher's not going to catch, and he is going to tell Kinesis. Way too sexy looking just fine here. One stun. Great RP for three. Dark Falco is going to put him through. Oh, man. The call down as well. It's going to catch him. Great team fight out of the raiding team. But the illusions are spawned. And now Hannah Montana running away. A lot of illusions up. Sick play from Dark Falco there. That was going to turn around. Great stun from Dignitas. But, man. Three dead heroes. Great combo out of the Dark Falco. And that is why you ban Magnus. That hero is scary. If that stuff happens, you just get crushed. I love that coordination as well. The gyrocopter didn't even ulti on the pack. He knew that the skewer was coming back. It wasn't quite perfect, but still very, very fantastic. Bear with 11 HP. Power shot gets it. Nice play. It's going to cost him a resummon. Level 13 on Lone and He's actually looking like he's saving for Radiance, despite picking up the two early gloves of haste. Just wants the early attack speed. It's going to go right into the uh, Radiance. This is actually a comparable attack speed to a Hannah Midas. A little bit... Um, less cost efficient in the late game in terms of farming. Hanamites will give you more gold, but double gloves of haste is not a bad thing. And there's the one level of bloodlust that he will be using on the bear later. Can also use that on uh, Juggernaut very effectively because more attack speed on this hero will allow you to slash more times when you end up using Omni Slash. And uh, the typical phase drum build is what he does go for. So, phase drum on the hero 53 kills on his sword. That's important, right? Way too sexy looking for runes. Shockwave is actually his pickup. Great skill to steal. Um, power Shot's also very good, but a 9 second cooldown. Shockwave does more damage on average uh, to lots of targets. Because if he does hit a creep wave first, I think the final hit will do more at least. Uh, and AUI now going on the Ancients. That is an armlet. That is an armlet. Okay. Um, I've never seen an armlet before in the bear, but that's actually pretty sick. Let's talk about what this does. Um, I am so surprised. Alright guys, this is what Armlet does. It does plus damage, gives you attack speed, it gives you strength, and when you activate it, it gives you extra of all of that stuff as well, I believe. Uh, not so much the attack speed, and it, you know, is this really worth it? I mean, the strength does nothing for the bear. 25 strength on your spirit bear does zero. Um, so the 25 strength is wasted. The HP drain apparently doesn't work on the bear, so that is a benefit. And uh, it does give him 31 damage, though, and the total cost is, what, um, 2,700? So I guess, technically, if you compare this with something like a Demon Edge, Demon Edge does 46 damage for 2,000, 2,400. Armlet is a little bit more expensive than that, and it does marginally less damage, but also gives attack speed. So, is it worth it? Possibly. But it's weird. It's very weird. Very weird. Shackle on fog. No, it's actually going to catch him. Actually, great ulti. Purge put on fog. He puts a vacuum ulti down and he does get killed, though. So, a little too close to the enemy team there. Now, the tower gotten killed by uh, Dignitas as well. So, Dignitas takes the tower in exchange. They did lose the tower, though. Ooh, Courier. One hit, two hit. Gets it. Nice play by Universe. Radiant team not paying attention there. But a nice snipe by him. Good foresight on that one. FNC will take out the creeps. He's actually going to go for Helm of the Dominator, which will allow him to stack creeps later, if needed. Lifesteal is also pretty useful, but I'd like to point out his HP is very, very low right now. 967 at the 20 minute mark is not extremely healthy. Now, there's not that many stuns on Dignitas' lineup, so grabbing something like a B BKB would be less useful. That's uh, undeniable, but um, regardless, his HP is still pretty scarily, uh, that's not a word, pretty, pretty low. So it's an armlet maelstrom. All right, he's going in. Oh, they must have a gem. They do have a gem, and that's going to be Jaro going down immediately. So there it is, armlet maelstrom, the new AUI 2000 spirit bear build. So weird. Uh, another ulti being done to Universe, and Universe looks like, yeah, he's going to put the ulti down. Wants to start the team fight off right. A lot of damage being done, actually. And Nagas Iron's going to stop this. Will he be able to kill Universe? It looks pretty likely. Here comes the power shot. Turns it off a little late, and the power shot from Hannah doesn't matter. Still gets the kill. 
And Dismack in trouble. Oh, I love his positioning. Look at this AUI. Just sitting high ground, simply just microing the bear. Here comes the war. Dark Falco's getting low. Iron Shell as well. He's getting killed before he's able to cast his ulti. And more right clicks on Hannah Montana. Hannah's going to go down as well. AOI farming in the meantime doesn't even have to. He's not even concerned about this at all. Oh my gosh. Such sick play from him. He's in the safest possible position on the high ground. Not worried about it. Mojo's going to take some slow fog. Take some damage as well. Vacuum. And Universe going for the spin. Stun in two seconds. There it is. Bloodlust on the bear. He's going after him. And that's the kill. Naga Siren goes down. So 22 to 16 now. Dignitas fighting back. I still think this bear build is so weird. He's got plus 88 damage. He does have a lot of attack speed, but dang. So unusual. Okay, so it gives a total of 25 attack speed. Gives a total of 40 damage and 5 armor. And it gives HP regen, actually. You know, that's, that's actually pretty good. If you add all those up, it's not bad. Slightly more than a demon edge. Gives comparable damage. Minus 6. 6 less. Gives you 25 attack speed. You don't get the strength and you don't get the degen. But you do get 5 armor, which is good for the bear, helps keep him survivable, and the 8 HP regen. This is actually really cool. Um, makes a lot of sense. But that's because you're kind of, not saying he's cheating, but like, you're breaking the item. You don't have the HP degen. So, pretty cool bear item, I must say, with the maelstrom on top that picks up a demon edge. Probably going for an MKB next. This bear hits like a truck at 22 minutes, and wow, just making a lot of trouble. He is going to get netted. Uh, call down, double call down. I don't know what's going on. Dark Falco looking for an ulti. Actually blinked in just then. Taking a lot of damage. Now he's got to skew out to stay alive for a couple seconds. But the Iron Shell is going to disable his blink dagger once again. Still hasn't been able to initiate. More right click on the Naga Siren and a Bloodlust as well on the Spirit Bear. Though the bear may be in trouble. One shackle on him. Net as well. More shockwaves. They really want to kill this thing. But the regen as well as the armor is actually pretty impressive. And he will get out of there. So mid tower takes some creep damage, and the rest of Dignitas is going to hide back in the jungle. They have all of their ultis ready to go, though, so they are not going to be against fighting in a fight. Diffusal Blade is actually the choice on Jug. Pretty cool choice. And they want to kill. AUI has got a missile coming after him. Can he get the entangled dismack? Oh, there it is. That, oh my god, that damage is so huge. Disruption's a little late as well. Late as well. And the missile is going to stay alive. Connects with its target. Regardless, they've got a dead hero. They've got to defend this, and it's going to be a really tough. Hannah Montana uses the power shot. And there's the Riptide as well. Bear using the roar. <laughs> Look at the hits on the tower. They don't have a whole lot of time. They could deny it. There's the RP. Great RP4. Are caught, but the fountain. Not a fountain. That is a healing ward. Putting a lot of heal down. Universe gets his ulti off just in time. And they kill the Gyrocopter. Another spin. Three dead heroes despite the perfect initiation. Not even burning an Aegis. The Radiant team was not able to follow up on that. I think the Gyrocopter tried to go in through the call down down, but his HP is just not there. He spent 2,000 gold on Helm of the Dominator, and what he really needs is probably a BKB. Dare I say, much more expensive than a Helm of the Dominator, of course. There's the Bloodlust again going after Hannah. Hannah disrupted. It's going to buy him a second, but he looks dead, man. Oh no, he's going to get saved by the Naga Siren. Great usage there. Way too sexy. He actually died to illusions. He intentionally walks into the silence. Very smart. Or the sleep, that is. Tide's going to be out K. Two times the multicast. There's the spin and the ignite. The bear's also diving over here, picking up some creeps. AOI doesn't even care. He's just farming. Dark Falco tries to snag somebody with the skewer, but they get nobody. Back up to the high ground. Another bloodlust. Hannah's in trouble. Has to win run to get out of here. And I don't think there's a whole lot that the Dark Falco stack can stop to this Dignitas push. I mean, this bear is so stacked in items. I think he's even going for a basher as well. Oh, no. Sorry. That's MKB. Excuse me. Just finishing up that MKB. 1,200 to go. And look at the synergy as well between the healing ward as well as the bear. It's insane. A percentage-based heal on a 2,700 HP bear is just absolutely usable. It's so viable. Man, this build is really cool, though, I must say. AUI truly the creator of awesome builds, apparently. Raiding team being a little worried right now. They do have Vision of the Dire team. There's not really a whole lot for them to farm. And most they could take this large camp here. This camp's going to be pushing in, so all they can do is set up for the next fight. But I don't think they can take a low ground fight. If the Spirit Bear entangles somebody, the fight starts. It doesn't matter if you have a Shadow Demon, because they have enough follow-up where they can shut that down. A lot of time left on the Roshan. If we check out the numbers, big gold advantage to Dignitas, big EXP advantage to Dignitas. Despite getting behind so far in the early game, it doesn't even look like it's mattering. 
comes another Bloodlust. Also maxing out Bloodlust pretty fast just to get the bear up faster, but man, I love the drafting here. They're actually working Ogre Magi into a lineup and making his third skill very, very usable on the bear. So pretty impressive play from them. Looks like Fog going for a uh, Shiva's Guard next, and this is pretty much a last dis, uh, last last ditch desperation attempt, I believe, is what I'm trying to say for the rainy team. I love that they're smoked up. What they're going to do is they're going to come south here and try to jump on the enemy team. Uh, looks like AOI is actually positioned with his bear in a safe place. Can they initiate on this? Not exactly. They want to go on these supports as possible. There's a Naga ulti comes in. I think they can grab three with an RP. We'll see. It's going to be close. He's going to get positioned. Here it comes. Here comes RP. Great blink. Actually only catching one and it's just the support Ogre Magi. He does go down looking for the vacuum. Does catch a lot of heroes. The spin as well and this is not looking good for the rainy team. Naga Siren goes down, FNC running for his life, but the Diffusal Blade has been used. There's the disruption to buy him a second, but Dismech as well. There's the drum. Gyro goes down. Shadow Demon in trouble, and this is looking like Dignitas is going to take it 2-0 in the winner bracket finals here. Great recall trying to save the bear, but he does still go down. It does disjoint auto attacks. One bottle on the floor because they wanted to pick up that gem. And AUI 2000 resummoning the bear takes the tower. Armlet's currently off, but who cares? He's got a Monkey King bar. And the bot Rax is going to go down as they lost a five man team wipe. Solid blink by Way Too Sexy, revealing, of course, one of the counters to the Naga Siren ulti. We have seen that for the last six months or so, but how effective was that? Good luck in finals is what Hannah Montana calls. So that is the end of the game. Denny Toss will take it 2 0 despite the great early start from Dark Falco stack. The synergy between the uh, items and the heroes were just fantastic. Really, really impressive play out of Denny Toss. They did mess up their tri lane a little bit, and there were quite a few deaths on Fogged, but I, I'm not faulting him for that at all. I think those are great plays from the Radiant team to get those kills on him. And simply put, AUI's item build was just so fantastic, and merging that up with the Bloodlust was just really fun to watch. So, Bear is dead at least. They've got that consolidation. But what a fun match from Dignitas. Really showing this new strat. Even the Diffuse the Blade fall from Juggernaut to give him a little bit more disable is just really cool. Also does remove Empower, which is sweet. Giving something much needed. <laughs> Universe really wanted that kill. The uh, map long shackle shot. The worst part is I can't even push that well now because the bear's dead for another 40 seconds. What do you even buy at this point? He actually didn't even have an AC. Which is very unusual. It's very, very common to have an AC. Oops, he's going to go and takes one kill. Almost always we see an AC on the Lone Druid Bear, but he has uh, equivalent attack speed from just the Armlet as well as the Mule, or uh, Maelstrom. And uh, on top of that, picks up an MKB and other attack speed and a lot of damage from that. So, looks like they want to fight this one. Will the Radio team get here in time is the question. Gets turned off. AOI running for his life. They are all out of it. Way too sexy running for his life. Tide even does a nuke and a big ulti from Universe, but actually not enough damage being done here. Little mini stun. Hero that looks dead is probably Gyrocopter here. He puts the, the healing ward down once again. Still hasn't been targeted. Great multicast. Gonna take out the Gyro. The Rainy team is just having fun at this point. Hannah Montana does get killed, and last hero is gonna be the Shadow Demon, actually. I mean, other than Magnus, of course. Magnus, you look dead. Diffuse the Blade, and that is gonna be just about it. Range creep. Range creep. Can you suicide? Nope. Does get killed. And that'll be it. Alright. I'm gonna speed this up. Let's let this game roll on through. Okay, good game actually. That was a fun game. So that means Dignitas is gonna be in the finals here. They win at least one thousand dollars. And uh Dark Falco Stack goes the loose bracket. They're gonna be playing against the other team, which is I tweeted it. I did not actually remember it though. Let me go check this out. Um, Grats though. Um, I heard from Aosin that they're a very, very talented team, super good team. So we'll see if they can beat out the Dark Falco stack in the loose bracket. We'll be back in just a second, guys, with game number, I'm sorry, the lower bracket set. Uh, my name's Purge, of course. Go check out my website, it's purgegamers.com. If you guys want to find out more about the tournament, it is going to be at a website called gamecom.plantronics.com slash dota2. So make sure you guys stay tuned for the loser's bracket finals. And uh, we'll be back in just a second.